Where's the A, B, C, and D Street Band? There's none. No, that's Shazam. There's no music, though. I was trying to Shazam it, but Rob answered. The Dice Tower, episode 563. The Dice Tower Awards 2018! Welcome to The Dice Tower, a podcast about board games and card games, but especially all these people who play them. On today's show, we're live in Orlando for Dice Tower Con and announcing the winners of the 2018 Dice Tower Awards. The extended Dice Tower family is here to present awards for best family game, best cooperative game, most innovative game, best game of the year, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and joining me now, the tenor, alto, and soprano to my bass, Tom, Mandy, and Suzanne. Well, we're really thrilled. It's such an exciting thing to see the difference between this and the first time we did this. <laughs> and I think there was maybe 30... No, we, the first time we did the Dice Tower Awards, we did it right before a Wits and Wagers game. Was anyone at that game? And we announced the winners... Z <laughs> Z <Garcia. laughs> it was like, we did a Wits and Wagers game, and I think halfway through... I said, and oh, here, by the way, you get to be the first people to hear the winners. And <laughs> no one else was here? <sighs> We're old. Oh, Jason. <laughs> Jason was here. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't see your hand. <laughs> so it's grown as time has gone by, and it's exciting. We're basically at the midpoint here of Dice Tower Con. Don't let that get you down. It's only the midpoint if you're not staying up till 2 in the morning, in which case that's your midpoint. But I hope you've been having a fantastic convention if you're here. I hope if you're watching live that you feel bad for not being here and you come next year. <laughs> um, but we, I guess I should start talking to my co-host here instead of <laughs> hogging all the limelight. Are you guys having a good con? I'm having a great time. This is, this is a blast. I, I got to play Merchant of Venus today. You know, that's always a plus. No, 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 this is, this is okay, so. <laughs> I was walking down the hallway, from, from just making sure everything was going okay, and I saw Eric walking extremely slowly with the board of Merchants of Venus, balanced so nothing would fall off it, kind of like Kramer from the Seinfeld episode. What was that all about? So um, I was, I was uh, an idiot and set up in the <laughs> event space is. where there is scheduled things going on at different points in the day. And then we, it was empty when I showed up. I said, oh, great, room. So we set up our game. And, then they announced us, as, as, uh, as the con staff very politely are, are want to do. Uh, yeah, you guys have to back up. There's an, an event coming up here in just a few minutes. And so we either had to pack up about an hour into the game or move it. So we found a table just around the corner and carried the board. And if you played Merchant of Venus, you know there's all these little tiny tokens. Then we're carrying it slowly and nothing spilled. We didn't lose anything. And the game well continued in the hall. Well done. Well done Eric. Yeah, it was exciting. <laughs> it, it, it turned it into a dexterity game. We, we picked it up. Game, right? game game. We picked up the board and we delivered it to the table. We love it. Suzanne gave up pie to be here tonight. That's what you told me. I did. I apologize. I was having some dinner with some good friends and we were, I look, oh, look at the time and I'm getting, you know, a number yeah. of friendly reminder tweets. Yeah, yeah. 13 minutes, friends. Suzanne. Right. And I was, I had one bite of my pie and then I realized what time was it? I abandoned pie to be here because this is so important and, and lovely to be here. Aww. <laughs> Aww. No, I mean, for anybody who knows me, abandoning a pie, that, that's, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. So sure. I really love y'all. You're amazing. You're as good as pie. <laughs> 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 I, 
Yay. <laughs> All right, so anyway, we're glad to be here tonight because we have the Dice Tower Awards, and we're very excited because we worked with uh, Panda Manufacturing this year, and we have these really nice trophies. I'm really excited about this. This is pretty good. You could, you could clock someone with this one. <laughs> Clocking people is not approved yeah. by the Dice Tower in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying it could. Um, and, well, I'm just holding it backwards here. We have the winners listed on the bottom. I'm going to hand this back to Jason, but... Uh, we're pretty excited about these. Um, so we have a few of the winners are maybe here today, maybe, we don't know, I know. Um, <laughs> but let's talk real quickly about Dice Tower Awards before we start. Um, there's always this misnomer that I pick the Dice Tower Awards or I even really kind of control it because I don't. Uh, you can easily figure that out by looking at my top end of the year picks and then compare them to the Dice Tower Awards. Sometimes they match up, sometimes they don't. Instead, we have a group of people between 50 and 100. This year, I think it was around 80? 73. 73. <laughs> Jason's uh, the numbers guy. Jason is the numbers guy. And so first we do a series of nominations. And basically, anybody can nominate any game. So we do that. Then we go through all the nominations and say, OK, this one doesn't qualify here. And we cut out some. But then everyone votes on the nominations, and we narrow it down to a group of five, except for the best of the year in which we do the top 10. Then we give people a couple months to go out and play these games and try them out. And then we vote on them. When I say we, I mean everyone but me votes on them. That way you know that I'm not controlling them. I only get to vote if there's a tie. And for the last two years, I did not get to do that. Although this year? There might have been a tie. There was a tie. Just one. Just one. But it felt good. I got to vote. <laughs> You do you want to know which category that was? Yeah, you'll never know. Well, maybe I'll say it in like a couple years. All right. Because <laughs> I don't want that, the people who lost to come up and be like, all right. <laughs> uh, but we were also very, I was very surprised at the voting in these. It was very close. Um, every time we do this, there's always the idea that goes out on the internet and things where people say, this is groupthink. You know, oh, everyone thinks the same way. I've seen the votes, it is not groupthink, all right? We have a huge diverse, and I'm always looking for more people. I deliberately pick people who like different games to be on this. They do not have to agree with me. In fact, I hope they disagree with me. I just want them to pick quality games. I mean, we still got Eric and a few others on the committee. Um, you can't kick me out at this point. Eric always votes on time, though. I will say that. I do. Well, you do send lots of very strongly worded emails as the deadline gets close. It's still like a week out. Everybody, quick, vote. And like, what? It's still a week away. He's, he's very stern. People don't vote until you... Uh, if I say you need to have them done by midnight a certain date, they will get done at 11.59 on that date, and I need to specify time zone, or that might not happen either. <laughs> Now, we use a Facebook group. We put all this stuff together. If you stumble across that group and ask to join it, you'll notice I usually decline. Um, but it, we're looking. It's mostly people who are part of the Dice Tower Senate Network, but also a lot of other reviewers and media people. I want people who have a lot of experience with games. And again, I'm looking for a diverse group of people. Jason is the one who puts together everything at the end and takes the votes and tallies all the numbers and double checks them. And he and Derek Porter have put together a lot of the video packaging, the voice work was done by Eric Summer, mostly because none of the rest of us want to pronounce all the names. <laughs> yes, so if, if I say anything incorrectly, at least I said it consistently incorrectly. That's good. Well, yeah. we, we're still scared about, we, we don't want a repeat of the Kevin Sorbo incident from Origins. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, was, it was unfortunate for him, but he came in and did not know anything about board games. This was like six, seven years ago or Something whatever. Like and he had to read all these names and he had no idea. <laughs> it was a massacre of names. So it's, it's, it's a low bar to get over, is what you're saying. <laughs> All right, well, we don't really want to drag this out. We want to get started with this. So I'm going to move down here, and I'm going to start, and we have different folks on the Dice Tower. We actually have so many people involved in the Dice Tower now, I can't let them all give out awards. There's just too many, and I'm sorry. You know, I wish I could let everyone come up here. But we let some people come up here, various people. So we're going to start with the... Williams, and they're going to come up and they're going to introduce our small, gate, our small publisher award. Hey, everybody. Hi. How's it going? Great. 
So Thanks for asking. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so why don't you tell people how they would know you, where they could find you, what's, who are you? Oh, um, I'm Laura Williams. I'm Spencer Williams, and we're married with board games. As I'm sure there are other people in yes. this audience who are the same, but so we claimed it first. We did. You can't have it. So you can see our video reviews over on the Dice Tower channel. We also have a podcast, Married with Board Games podcast. We link to all of those things on our website, marriedwithbg.com. Awesome. Laura is a famous movie star. I'm not a movie star. TV, <laughs> TV star. I've done a couple of things on TV. <laughs> That's more than the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we live in Texas, and uh, there's just a couple of TV shows that shoot there in Dallas, so I've done some work on some of those. Uh, most notably, Murder Made Me Famous. Ooh, Ooh on the uh, Reels channel. <laughs> so you were murdered? No, um, even better. What does that mean? I was an undercover cop that arrested um, a serial killer. What did you do as an undercover? I, I was um, undercover as a... A lady of a the lady night. A lady of the night. <laughs> wow. But a cop still. And, yes. uh, and she got the guy. Yeah, got him. So yay! Yeah. <laughs> Well, now they don't have to watch the episode. Right, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. why don't we take this moment to take a look at the nominees for Best Small Publisher. <laughs> Bear with us. Best Game from a Small Publisher. Seventh Continent. Designed by Ludovic Rudy. Bruno Sauter. Published by Sirius Pulp. Azul, designed by Michael Kiesling, published by Plan B Games. Century Spice Road, designed by Emerson Matsuchi, published by Plan B Games. Gloomhaven, designed by Isaac Childress, published by Cephalofair Games. Sagrada, designed by Adrian Adamescu, Daryl Andrews, published by Floodgate Games. And the winner is Gloomhaven from Cephalofair A Games by Isaac Schultz. Gloomhaven is nominated for six awards tonight. That marks the most nominations of any game in 2017. This is the first Dice Tower Award for Isaac Childress and for Gloomhaven. Wow. So, <laughs> cool. These are, these are very large, and now I have two of them. Apparently you give one for publisher and designer, so that's me, because I'm a small publisher, right? I just <laughs> uh, publish my own games. Yeah, I thought I might get disqualified because, like, the game itself is so big, maybe that would... I, I don't know, that's a bad joke. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate this. Thank you to Dice Tower and uh, all the Gloomhaven fans out there. Um, yeah, I'll get off the stage now. <laughs> all right, and our next nominee is going to be, our next uh, award is our new designer award. And this is going to be bouncingly shown off by Roy Canada. Woo! Yay, Roy! Bouncingly? How's it going? How's it going? Yeah, I move a lot, so I think that's been said. Do you do that when you're on stage? Uh, yeah, I can be like, hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> I try to stay at the microphone, but you know, sometimes, sometimes I'm out of frame, sometimes I'm in frame. So, yeah. I recently had my dice guy made. And uh, Tom was like, oh man, when, when you get your dice guy made, I've seen it, like it bounces all over the place. Little did he know that when he actually sent it to me, the first thing I did was I made a gif of it bouncing all over the place. <laughs> it's, it's a brand, like I have to do it now, right? Or you could stop bouncing. <laughs> you told me never to stop. Is that going back on? I did, I did, no, <laughs> He's no. He's like, That's, you do it, do it more. So, that's right, whenever, <laughs> whenever someone has a, like a, anything, that someone's like, why did I do that? I'm like, keep doing it. <laughs> hey, I just really like board games thing. a whole brand. lot. Everyone needs a brand, right? Everyone needs a shtick. Yeah, yeah. So, so mine is being super excited about board games, maybe even too excited about board games sometimes. So 
but I'm definitely excited about the best new designers, so let's take a look at the nominations. Best game from a new designer. Dragon Castle, designed by Yalmar Ha, Luca Ricci, Lorenzo Silva, published by Simon Limited. Gloomhaven, designed by Isaac Childers, published by Sepplefair Games. Photosynthesis, designed by Yalmar Ha, published by Blue Orange Games. Spirit Island, designed by R. Eric Royce, published by Greater Than Games. Too Many Bones, designed by Adam Carlson, Josh J. Carlson, published by Chip Theory Games. So, Tom, could you tell me a little bit, or Roy, a little bit about what, what the qualifications are to be considered new designers that literally only if it's your first ever published board game design? It's your first or second. And the reason we did that was because a lot of designers will publish a Vicious Fishes as their first design. <laughs> <laughs> that sells a total of 40 copies or so. And uh, we feel like that disqualifies them. And so we just made it a first as it or should. second. It should. <laughs> <laughs> Some people will never make the list at all, right? Yeah, so no, it's just uh, it's, it's the first or second. And we've done that for a long time, and it seems to work well. Awesome. Well, the winner for Best New Designer is Gloomhaven. <laughs> <laughs> this is the second Dice Tower Award tonight for Isaac Childress and for Gloomhaven. They previously won for Best Small Publisher. <laughs> Come, he's all I think you just stay. Just, you don't even need to leave. Stay <laughs> on the stage. Did, <laughs> did, did you drive or fly? Uh, I flew, yeah. <laughs> it, it could be a problem, I don't know. Um, but yeah. Uh, nice to see you all again. Uh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much for these awards. I, no, I really do appreciate these, like, um, you know, being a new designer and, um, you know, coming out with Gloomhaven. It's just sort of changed my life in the, in the best way possible. And uh, so, yeah, I really appreciate the recognition for, for this. And, uh, and, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> I like how the, his collection can become a tower of towers. Oh, that's true. On that's his true. shelf. It's very meta. It's like Voltron. Oh. <laughs> now, the next award Eric may not approve of as much because I saw your copy of Merchants of Venus, and it would not even come close to winning Best Production. Um, oh, that would be no, ooh, that's oh. true. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make it. It's an Avalon Hill copy. It's just... Cardboard. Yeah, well, <laughs> nowadays games look amazing. So to introduce our best production award, we have Liz Davidson. Yay! Now, I'm sure there's a few people wondering who Liz is. Why don't you tell us, and then we'll yell at people why they don't watch these shows. Yeah, actually, note the lack of description. Tom actually met me like an hour ago. No one knows me. I'm a solo gamer. I just hide. And then I come out like, what's here? They trot me out for Dice Tower events. Well, we were talking the other day about starting a solo board game convention. <laughs> I had one at my house last week. It was great. Where would, <laughs> where would people find you? Uh, I can be found either on Token Punch Lunch. We've had a name change, new brand. Or uh, you can find me at beyondsolitaire.net or on YouTube as Beyond Solitaire. So if you want to learn a solo variant of a game, I'm one of your people. Come find me. Well, you know, since we're talking about production, so how does this, you know, a lot of times I think for solo games, I'm like, hey, I can just play it on my iPad or whatever. But the actual game, setting it up with the physical components, how does that, is that more, is that important as a solo gamer, like to actually feel the pieces? I would say yes. For me, it's a major part of my immersion in a game. Like one of the best parts about playing solo is being able to really get into a story, really get into a game. And it's the games with high production values that really like help you sink into just the fascinating worlds that game designers create. It just gives it that extra oomph that you need to have a really good solo experience. Hmm. Well, good. Maybe I'll play more solo games at some so point. So speaking of, let's hear these nominees. Best Board Game Production. Azul, designed by Michael Kiesling, published by Plan B Games. Charterstone, designed by Jamie Stegmeier, published by Stonemeyer Games. Photosynthesis, designed by Yalmar Ha, published by Blue Orange Games. Twilight Imperium 4, designed by Dane Beltrami, 
Corey Konetska, Christian T. Peterson. Published by Fantasy Flight Games. Wasteland Express Delivery Service. Designed by Jonathan Gilmore, Ben Kinchback, Matt Riddle. Published by Pandasaurus Games. That's a good selection. Those are all our beautiful games, for sure. Uh, not enough solo games, but we'll, we'll pass over that. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner is... Is it here? Yes. Photosynthesis from Whoa. Blue Orange Games. Wow. <laughs> Photosynthesis is nominated for three awards tonight. This is the first Dice Tower Award for Yalmar Hawk and for Photosynthesis. All right, um, hello guys. Well, thanks a lot for everything. Thank you for your support. Thank you Dice Towers for that. And we'll continue to do games like that. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right, we all like good games. <laughs> and Sorry, I'm all falling off track here. We all like good games. <laughs> But good games can be made even better with an expansion or 10 or so. So <laughs> let's bring on for this our very own Sam Healy. All right. Expansions, Welcome. Huh? Expansions. I don't know if you're, if you're like me, I, I actually often get more excited about an expansion than a, Sometimes, yeah. uh, than a, a game, because I know I already like the game. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's like, ooh, more of this goodness. <laughs> yeah, the best thing you can do with an expansion is just give the persons that are playing the game more stuff to do with what they already enjoy playing. So that's and it reinvigorates a game that you already own. It adds more value to the package that you already love. Yes, and it also doesn't count against my limit of games that I own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, when an expansion comes in, a game doesn't have to go out. <laughs> Unless, although there's some. Some, like, yeah. Like Eldritch Horror, it's, it's yes. to like it starts boxes. growing, right? Like, oh, I gotta get rid of a game. <laughs> but when you get rid of a game that has 10 expansions, suddenly you can have four more games. Exactly. <laughs> That's is, very true. This is called problematic math for <laughs> yes. uh, first world problems. First people. world problems, <laughs> for sure. All right, well, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the nominees. Mansion. Champions of Midgard Valhalla, designed by Oli Steiners, published by Gray Fox Games. Psy, The Wind Gambit, designed by Kai Stark, Jamie Stegmeier, published by Stonemeyer Games. Star Wars Rebellion, Rise of the Empire, designed by Corey Konetska, Published by Fantasy Flight Games. Terraforming Mars, Venus Next. Designed by Jacob Frixelius. Published by Stronghold Games, Frix Games. Zaya, Embers of a Forsaken Star. Designed by Ira Fay, Cody Miller. Published by Far Off Games. That was, All a good, right. that was a good year for expansions. That is a good year for expansions. And the winner of... 2018 best expansion is exaggerated pause <laughs> Star Wars Rebellion Rise of the Empire This is the second Dice Tower Award for Star Wars Rebellion. It previously won last year in 2016 for best two player game. This is the sixth Dice Tower Award for Corey Kaneska. He previously won 2011 Best Production Values, Mansions of Madness. 2012 Best Production Values, Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures. 2012 Best Game of the Year, Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures. 2014 Best Board Game Components, Star Wars Imperial Assault. And 2016 Best Two-Player Game, Star Wars Rebellion. That's a good Woo. pedigree there. Yeah. Very much so. All righty, well, Fantasy Flight wasn't able to make it tonight, so me and Jason I'll accept these on, the on behalf of, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just take them home. I'll make sure they get them. That's how that works. Oh, I'll ship them. No, I want to present an award now. That's Wait how it works, sorry. Okay, well, here you go. <laughs> Jason's hoping not, because he had to carry all these in here. <laughs> all righty, well, hey, um, we already talked about production. That's half, I think, of how the game looks. The other half is artwork, and here to present artwork is our very own Crystal and Ambie. Yay. Ah, good artwork. 
You know, I played a game today where uh, that wasn't a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, you know, and then I played a game that was not that good, but had really good art. And I liked it a little better. I think art makes a big difference for me, anyway. I mean, it definitely brings you in, even if you don't know anything about a game. If you see something pretty sitting on the table compared to something that's a little more bland, I think you're immediately a little more interested in the game, even without knowing anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> says, the, says the person who plays 18xx games, I mean. Well, well. <laughs> art can make a game better, I think, but I still want a good game, so. But. Yes. You don't need to have art, but it helps. <laughs> you gotta fix who's we're, introducing we're the different a really awards. Good award. <laughs> no, I like good art. <laughs> so on that note, let's take a look at the video with all the nominees for best artwork. Best artwork. Century Golem Edition, illustrated by Justin Chan, Chris Williams, Fernanda Suarez, published by Plan B Games. Charterstone. Illustrated by Lena Cosette, David Forrest, Gong Studios. Published by Stonemeyer Games. Lisboa. Illustrated by Ian O'Toole. Published by Eagle Griffin Games. Near and Far. Illustrated by Ryan Lockett. Published by Red Raven Games. Yamatai. Illustrated by Jeremy Fleury. Published by Days of Wonder. Mmm, that's good artwork. Pretty. <laughs> As and, most people do. Well, I, I like it. Yeah. I just, it, does, it doesn't need it to be a good game. <laughs> and the game that had the best artwork this year is Near and Far. Yeah. 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 Near and Far is nominated for four awards tonight. This is the first Dice Tower Award for Ryan Lockett and for Near and Far. This is totally unexpected. Wow, thank you so much. I'm so excited. So uh, 10 years ago, I was listening, before I started Red Raven, I was listening to the Dice Tower all the time, and it really inspired me to get my butt in gear and start working, so. <laughs> Were you like 10 at the time? I know, right? I was like, I was in middle school, and no, come on, Tom, I'm 32, okay? I know I do look really young, though, but. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. This is very exciting. <laughs> Now, Emerson is on my case, and one of these years, we will add a best 3D modeler. That's, yes. uh, I'm mentioning this. No, no, because it For says sure. it's an important thing, right? And we, um, you look at a lot of games, you're like, those are fantastic minis. That doesn't just magically happen. So at some point, we will give them their due, but we're going to mention that we're thinking about it now. <laughs> but it's actually not mentioned in a lot of boxes. I say this because Emerson actually put together some models. I think he did the Onitama ones, right? He did, yes. He also designs games and all sorts of things. All right. <laughs> And stuff. And stuff. And stuff. Yeah. and stuff. All right. Hey, let's talk now about one of my favorite categories, and that's innovative games. Games that are different than the rest. And here to present this is Gary Pope. Yeah, Gary! Oh. Woo! Were, you, were you running a camera there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to make you do both. Thank <laughs> you, Gary. That's amazing. Need to start paying me more. <laughs> <laughs> Or would, at all. <laughs> so how would people find you? Uh, yeah, I have a, a YouTube channel, Late to the Table. It's all about uh, basically tips and tricks on the board gaming communi community and also things you do with games and basically like how to pimp your games and stuff like that. But um, recently I've been talking a lot about Meetup, which is a thing that people just don't really utilize a lot, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's actually go ahead and start with the... Video for most innovative game. Most innovative game. Seventh Continent. Designed by Ludovic Rudy, Bruno Sauter. Published by Sirius Pulp. Charterstone. Designed by Jamie Stegmeier. Published by Stonemeyer Games. Drop Mix. Published by Hasbro. Fog of Love. Designed by Jacob Jaskov. Published by Hush Hush Projects. Gloomhaven, designed by Isaac Childress, published by Cephalofair Games. All right, so 
Seventh Continent won this with Series Pulp. <laughs> Seventh Continent is nominated for four awards tonight. This is the first Vitar Award for Ludovic Rowdy and Bruno Sauter and for Seventh Continent. Let's hear from them now. Greetings, explorers. This is Bruno from Serious Pulp. I hope you will forgive my uh, rust English. If I've said it once, I've said it before, when uh, Ludovic and I uh, uh, first dreamt of the Seventh Continent uh, many years ago, we were completely unaware of just how successful it would be, how and how far we could take our ideas and how supportive the entire board game community would be. Now comes the time to thank you all once again, as we are delighted uh, to hear that we've won the Dice Towers most innovative game of the year award and coming from these guys it's quite the honor and we are uh, thrilled uh, Ludovic and I for uh, this uh, this award uh, and we'd like to thank say thank you to for all those who took part in this adventure and supported us uh, along the way uh, that was my minute of break today as you can imagine we have a, a lot going on with the what goes up must come down expansion so I'm going back to work <laughs> Thank you, and good luck on your ventures. I want that expansion. I know. Oh, man. Have you even, how many of the curses have you really played through? If you take out the word through, <laughs> <laughs> I've played most of them. Okay, all right. Now ask me how many I've finished. How many have you finished? Let's go on to the next category. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I like, uh, uh, I love that game, but all right. <laughs> So I'm always fascinated by how many people come to conventions and play two-player games. There's a lot of them out there. You know, mm -hmm. There's so many people playing two-player. There's a lot of great ones out there. And here to introduce this award, our very own singing, Dave Luza. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi. You're, you're not going to sing this, are you? No, I will not sing this. Oh, if you want to hear me sing, then you should come to the This Game is Broken live show. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I set that one up, didn't I? That's how you do it. Set him up. Love it. That's what they got. Or tonight, we're going to sing some karaoke, so. Mm. We are? Yeah, but that's not a public event. <laughs> <laughs> it is now, brother. I'm here. I'm here, so why are you not here? <laughs> yeah, um, uh, two-player games, that is great, because they are important. Let's, let's roll the tape. <laughs> Best two-player game. Caverna, Cave vs. Cave. Designed by Uwe Rosenberg. Published by Mayfair Games. Codenames Duet. Designed by Vlada Khvatil. Scott Eaton. Published by CGE. Fog of Love. Designed by Jacob Jaskov. Published by Hush Hush Projects. The Fox in the Forest. Designed by Joshua Bergen. Published by Renegade Game Studios. Santorini, designed by Gord, published by Roxley Games. And the winner is Santorini, Roxley Games, designed by Gord. This is the first Vitar Award for Gord and for Santorini. Oh, that was it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, hey, um, the we're going to accept this award on their behalf. They weren't able to make it tonight, but man, I, this is one for me. This is one of the most played like games that I've done game. two players mm -hmm. in the past year. I think. Well, I think the whole spread of of nominees was really impressive. There were a lot of games in that list that I just adore. So that was a. I think Santorini deserves should deserves all the praise they get for that one. I was game. very excited about it. It does bring up a point, though. Some people might be like, oh, "Wait a minute, does Santorini come out in 2016?" And I'll. We always have to like gauge when awards come, when games come out. Sure. Sometimes they're released in 2016, but they don't actually show up in stores until 2017. And we've already made our award list for that year. So we determined that Santorini was definitely not in the stores really till the beginning of January of 2017. And we've been playing it for a long time now. It's been out for a while, and I think it's a great game. Yeah, it's great. I like it a lot. Cool. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on now to a category that I like to talk about a lot. Reprinting games. Games are out of print and someone brings them back. That's always a wonderful thing. 
And to introduce this one, we have Z Garcia. Yeah, Z. Hello, hello. Good evening. <laughs> You're very oh, serious. I know, so professional. So you know, this is funny. I was just playing a game that is has been out of print and is in fact getting a reprint uh, soon, Blue Moon City. Oh, wow. oh yeah, yeah. And it's a fantastic game. And it's lovely to see a game, this is what I love about reprints, that a lot of people already know, a lot of people have already played. The love is there, but we're making new gamers all the time. And so you, you're able to share something you are already passionate with, with a whole slew of new people to the hobby. It's like sharing a movie you love hmm. with the you know, new family members or the new friends. I love that. Really excited about, um, about this category myself. So you know what? Let's go ahead and take a look at the nominations. Best reprint. Coliseum, designed by Wolfgang Kramer, Marcus Lutke. Published by TMG. Downforce. Designed by Rob Davio, Justin D. Jacobson, Wolfgang Kramer. Published by Restoration Games. Nemo's War. Designed by Chris Taylor. Published by Victory Point Games. Stop Thief. Designed by Rob Davio, Dr. Robert Doyle, Justin D. Jacobson. Published by Restoration Games. Twilight Imperium 4. Designed by Dane Beltrami. Corey Konetska, Christian T. Peterson, published by Fantasy Flight Games. All right, and the award goes to Downforce Restoration Games. Rob Davio and Justin D. Jacobson, Wolfgang Kramer Designers. Oh boy. There's a any more? There's a lot of trophies. Maybe the designer. Downforce is nominated for two awards tonight. <laughs> this is the first Dice Tower Award for Justin D. Jacobson and Wolfgang Kramer, and for Downforce. This is the fourth Dice Tower Award for Rob Davio. He previously won in 2011 for Most Innovative Game Risk Legacy, in 2015 for Most Best Cooperative Game Pandemic Legacy Season 1, and in 2015 for Best Game of the Year for Pandemic Legacy Season 1. So I, I know Isaac didn't take a lot of time, so I'm just going to take all his extra time. <laughs> um, so I want to thank a number of people. Uh, I was a little nervous, actually, because we had two games. I was worried we might split the vote. And uh, I'd feel pretty bad if we didn't win this category. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> Since your whole comp company's based on this. It's kind of like, pack it up and go home, guys. We're done. We're out. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank, obviously, our team is great. Rob is a genius. Um, Jason Taylor, who couldn't be here, he's our... Uh, Graphic uh, designer wizard, uh, Lindsay Davio, our production superhero. Uh, J.R. Honeycutt wasn't mentioned, but he's done a lot of work also. Our tinker in chief, uh, that was a little uh, remiss on our part, but, uh, and also um, Suzanne Sheldon, our master of fireworks. I don't know if that would get me in trouble, a little conflict there, but. Uh, <laughs> I did not vote for this <laughs> She wasn't on the team at the time, that's the important thing. Um, I do want to, she did help us publicize it though. I want to thank uh, also obviously Wolfgang Kramer, whose game uh, inspired us and frankly required so little effort on our part other than to make it look nice. Uh, I also want to thank those people who did make it look nice, our artists uh, Tavis Coburn and Michael Crampton, and our 3D modeler, Hakan Deniz, who did those wonderful cars. And I would also like to thank Tom. Um, frankly, uh, it was his passion and acceptance and approach to gaming that sort of gave me the confidence and uh, will to ditch a legal career of 20 years and open a board game publishing company. I don't believe though that I, what did I say when we first met you? To... So, well, I, I weaseled my way in by actually agreeing to do legal work on a pro bono basis. So I don't know how many people know that. <laughs> And then one day I came to Tom and I said, uh, you know what, he always, he's always telling people, uh, they want to design, uh, they want to open a publishing company. He said, well, don't open a publishing company just to the publish your game. Like, you know, if you can't get it published from somebody else, maybe you shouldn't start a company. So I, I, I went to Tom and I said, Tom, I, I want to start a publishing company. I said, wait, wait, let me tell you the plan. And I said, we're going to find these old games that uh, are out of print, have been out of print a long time. They just need some love and polish to bring them back for today's modern gamer. And he said, you know what, that's actually not a bad idea. And I guess he's right. And I didn't realize you get one for every designer, so next time I'm listing like 10 designers on the game. <laughs> please, please don't. <laughs> so 
just just load these up here and uh. <laughs> here comes Rob to the stage. Uh oh. The Sherpa. Well, I mean it's Rob Davio, so we have to let him talk, right? <laughs> You can see if you go to the hot games area, we have the new track for that uh, downforce here, so you can check it out. Where they're just like in real life, there's a place where they cross each other, <laughs> a loop there. Um, all right, so let's now go to party game. All right, and this one is going to be introduced by Rebecca Thompson. Hello. Hello. Hey, how do people know you, and where would they know you from? Well, um, my husband and I are on Board Game Blender, and my husband also does Board Game Breakfast now. And we also have our own channel that recently got 1,000 subscribers. Uh, if you want to go to family, the Family Showdown on YouTube, so we're there as well. And he's not here, but no, you are. No, he had to work. So. Oh, no, he had to work. <laughs> she is sending pictures of her having fun to him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is he watching? Of course he is. <laughs> party games. I like party games. This I is do always too. a hard category to define, right? So we just don't. Um, <laughs> that's easy. Well, like they're games you play at a party, and everyone's like, well, that's not a party game. Well, yeah, but you're not fun either. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, really, come on, who cares? I love them. I, I use them at school, too, with my students and stuff. Oh, that's, so, that's cool. Yeah. What class do you teach? Uh, I teach Latin and English, actually. That's cool. <laughs> Latin still taught? Yes, it is. That's it's oh, very popular in certain states. So, <laughs> <Huh>. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on where you live, yeah. <laughs> I did not know this. All yes. right. <laughs> I'm learning today. You are. But let's go ahead and take a look at our nominees. Best party game. Magic Maze, designed by Casper Lapp, published by Sit Down Dude Games. Meeple Circus, designed by Cedric Millet, published by Matigo. Rhino Hero Super Battle, designed by Scott Frisco, Stephen Strumpf, published by Haba. Werewords, designed by Ted Alspach, published by Bezier Games. Word Slam, designed by Inca Brand, Marcus Brand, published by Cosmos. All right, hmm. drum roll. The winner is Magic Maze. This is the first Dice Tower Award for Casper Laugh and for Magic Maze. Let's see what he has to say. Hi, my name is Casper Laugh. I'm the creator of Magic Maze. I just received the news that Magic Maze won the Dice Tower Award for Best Party Game. <laughs> By the way, I'm working on an expansion that will turn it into even more of a party game because you can be a trader or you can have a secret mission to fulfill. Oh. I hope you'll like that as well. Oh. Thanks again. Oh my good Jamie. You know, I didn't I didn't watch that. I I I just learned that now. <laughs> That's really cool. Tra can you imagine how much thumping you're going to have that pawn when somebody thinks you're a traitor? How do you communicate that? <laughs> wow, that's really... Well, Magic Maze is one of those games, I think it's got one of those mechanisms that I think should be in every game, right? We should have that red no. do something pawn in get, every game. People get angry. I got yelled at for using that. Stop banging that thing at me. And they took it from me and were so upset. Well, I stop, think it's a useful stop tool. Stop playing with that person. <laughs> oh, wait, was it Suzanne? No, it was my mom, actually. So, you know, like, I couldn't tell her no. <laughs> okay, okay there, I, I, I take that back. Then. Uh, Stop banging that thing. They actually <laughs> took that, 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 that is not in the kids' version, um, the whole, because you can communicate in the kids' right. version, which turned into a lot of one of my daughters saying, do this, and their kids got mad, so maybe, right. yeah, okay. Maybe <laughs> easy that call. See, see, yeah. red do something. All righty. Families, family games. We like to talk about those, and here to introduce those is Dan Hughes. Hello. 
You didn't bring Cora with you? Uh, no, no, she takes far too much attention away from me. That's the, uh, <laughs> that's the problem. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's how that works. You ruined know. UK Games Expo for me, ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> you, that's true, we're at the booth together, right? Yeah, no one's interested in any of us. It's all Cora, 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 and she's just sitting there playing with her stuff and not even taking attention. <laughs> it's wasted on her. <laughs> well, but, you know, she's all right, really, you know. I, I, like, I quite like her, ultimately, but, yeah. Well, I'm glad, ultimately. Because yeah. this would be, if you did it, this would be a really bad category. Yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, why don't we have a look at the nominations for Best Family Game? Best Family Game, Azul, designed by Michael Kiesling, published by Plan B Games. Baron Park, designed by Phil Walker Hart, published by Mayfair Lookout Games. Century, Spice Road, designed by Emerson Matsuchi, published by Plan B Games. Downforce, designed by Rob Davia, Justin D. Jacobson, Wolfgang Kramer, published by Restoration Games. Sagrada, Designed by Adrian Adamescu. Daryl Andrews. Published by Floodgate Games. Okay, and the winner is Azul. <laughs> Azul is nominated for four awards tonight. This is the first Dice Tower Award for Michael Kiesling and for Azul. <laughs> Wow, sorry. I didn't mean to um, delay this. Uh, I was really nervous because I wasn't sure if we were going to win or not, so I had to write down my speech. Um, <laughs> just nervously there, just a few minutes ago. Uh, first, let me say thanks to all of our fans, uh, for Azul, for seeing all the charm and joy that we saw in the game and giving us the opportunity to bring this to your homes and your houses and invite us in for this. Um, it's truly an honor on behalf of the team. Uh, that's the biggest compliment you can give us, is to play our games. Awards like this really validate all the hard work that they do, so sincere thanks. Uh, this particular category is near, to dear, uh, near and dear to our hearts, if I'm not tongue-tied, because we all have families, and that's probably the most meaningful relationships we have, so um, as my wife would happily tell you, I probably just destroyed her in a game and share it on social media. Do not value, uh, or do not play these games if you value your friendship with my husband. Stay away from him. <laughs> Sorry, I'm nervous. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> yeah, good job, Mike. All righty. Well, hey, one of the things, speaking of family games, one of the things that we really like in my particular family is playing cooperative games because, hey, uh, my wife is really a mean player, so uh, <laughs> I'm glad to be on her team. Is she here? <laughs> Okay, so yes. <laughs> so here to present the best cooperative award is Melody Vassal. Can, can you uh, back me up here on the meanest gamer in our family? Is it, it depends mom? on the game. Well, what do you mean? You're also mean. <laughs> <laughs> But like if a, you're talking about like metagaming, then that goes to sisters. Well, yeah, sure, sure, the sisters <laughs> metagame. In a cooperative game, though, we, we, we're, we make a pretty good team yes. some, sometimes. We've lost, oh, one of our favorite experiences, you guys get to watch. We played Ghost Stories live yes. with the internet. Anyone see that? Let's well, play that. That was an amazing time. We thought we were going to lose that game, and then... We were going to restart the game. We were, because it was so <laughs> bad. And then... The internet helped us. <laughs> With all the real mistakes. And we won. We won. That was a great experience. Yes. And now you're heading off to college. Boo. <laughs> Are you taking any cooperative games with you, do you think? Probably. I actually had a message recently, this past week, um, from someone who I'm going to meet at college. They're like, please send games. The ones who are not that fun. <laughs> well, that's not a problem. <laughs> we'll have a, a whole box of games, I'm not worried about that. So anyway, let's um, look at the nominations for cooperate. <laughs> These games. Best cooperative game. Seventh Continent, 
Designed by Ludovic Rudi, Bruno Sauter, published by Sirius Pulp. Flip Ships, designed by Kane Klenko, published by Renegade Game Studios. Gloomhaven, designed by Isaac Childress, published by Cephalofair Games. Pandemic Legacy, Season 2, designed by Rob Davio and Matt Leacock, published by Z-Man Games. Spirit Island, designed by R. Eric Royce, published by Greater Than Games. I'm telling you, it was one of the best years ever for cooperative games. Yeah, Unbelievable. Amazing, Agreed. Amazing. Glad I didn't have to vote on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, the winner for the cooperative games is Gloomhaven. <laughs> This is the third Dice Tower Award tonight for Isaac Childress and for Gloomhaven. They previously won for Best Small Publisher and Best New Designer. <laughs> you thought you wouldn't see me again. <laughs> so apparently I need to spend more time up here or I get, I get chided by, by Justin. So, so uh, just, just give me a minute here. <laughs> I I can't figure it out, Jr. No, I, oh really? No. no well, I mean, there's like the one up there. No, no, no. So there's actually there's, there's nine of them. <laughs> okay, I think I, I think I missed the riddle then. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. So there's one that is orthogonal only, top left corner. The one with the three lights doing right. What what's happening? Could, could, oh, someone clue us into what's going on? Okay, but they but they don't have to they don't have to be contiguous <laughs> or no no. no. What are they right, doing? Not. What, what's happening right now? <laughs> I feel like I just entered another dimension. I'm so confused. But they're not in order. It's not one, two, three, four, five, six. That's right. Yeah. Okay. The only, they're, the only one that's one, two, three, four, five, six is right here, right? Uh, it's right there. There's also uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this you know, is like what I used normal. to do when I was a kid in church. <laughs> <laughs> your I, your I count is, is, are we that boring? I know, right? Oh, you're, you're Justin, going this diagonal? is diagonal. You. <laughs> oh no! You I'm brought one going... of the people, and this. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So. <laughs> so, so yeah, we're trying to count one, two, three, four, five, six. I was I was only going um, orthogonally adjacent, right? And then then it only happens once up here in the corner. No, come on. <laughs> Yeah, that's the only orthogonal. Okay. This All is right. going to be super interesting in the audio only yes. portion of the program. No idea. Anyway, I I hope that took up enough time, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but oh yes, thank you for these awards. No, all joking aside, like I I really appreciate this. Um, yeah, cooperative games. I think yeah, you know, like Tom said, it was a great year for cooperative games. I am in the best company, and so I, I really appreciate. Um, being selected for this. Um, so thank you very much. All right, so for those of you listening via audio only, we're sitting in front of an amazing backdrop, actually. It's beautiful. Of <laughs> different dice, and so they were just playing a game with the dice. I'm using game really loosely there. <laughs> that game will not be in our nominations next year. I feel strongly on that one. But maybe we'll put a hidden message here next year. Huh? Yeah, there you that's go. That's a good idea. I like We're that. We're not going to. All right. Codes. Or was that a lie? Yeah. Or is one already there? All right. Now, I'm thinking maybe in future years that I will dress up a little bit more for this sort of thing. We're trying to make this look nicer. But I didn't make anyone do that. And yet, our next category, oh, but, yeah. Strategy Games, is being introduced by Robert Geislinger. Of course. Who? Who did dress for the occasion? I'm sorry, you didn't get the memo. Robert, for those of us, I write the memos. Yeah, you should you should show them your tie a little bit more. The yes, detail on the, the bottom of the tie is fantastic with the dice guy on there. Very nice. Jason, do you have stats on the tie? <laughs> this tie was made by Robert Geislinger. It features his dice guy on it, and it is black with blue <laughs> dice tie. <laughs> This is the first nomination for Robert's tie. 
And it's the only nominee, so it wins. <laughs> there you go. But let's... No. Uh, what? You don't know that what I have at home. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Is that a challenge? Oh. But I don't see you yeah, yeah, wearing yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Making me uncomfortable. So... You should always suit up for these things, right? I agree, Robert. Right? I agree. All right. Next. All right. Let's let's take a look at the nominees for strategy game. Best strategy game. Anachrony. Designed by Richard Amon, Victor Peter, David Tersi. Published by Mind Clash Games. Dinosaur Island. Designed by Jonathan Gilmore, Ryan Lewis. Published by Pandasaurus Games. Gloomhaven. Designed by Isaac Childress. Published by Cephalofair Games. Near and Far. Designed by Ryan Lockett. Published by Red Raven Games. Spirit Island. Designed by R. Eric Royce. Published by Greater Than Games. Eric, were you getting really tired reading those? You started to sound like a robot there. <laughs> uh, you know, you gotta reach a cadence. You have ah, to, uh, okay. you know, you're trying to go for an like, even pacing. You don't want to you know, do any name too quickly. Long. The other reason for a suit. <laughs> and these really easy to open envelopes. And the winner is Gloomhaven. This is the fourth Dice Tower Award tonight for Isaac Childress and for Gloomhaven. They previously won for Best Small Publisher, Best New Designer, and Best Cooperative Game. <clears throat> they now have the most wins in a single year for the Dice Tower Awards, passing seven games tied with three each. 2009 Small World, 2011 Flashpoint Fire Rescue, 2012 Mice and Mystics, 2013 Freedom the Underground Railroad, 2014 Dead of Winter, a Crossroads game, 2015 Time Stories, and 2016 Captain Sonar. Wow. That's like the longs. Wow. That's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> rarified, rarified air, I guess. Um, thank you. Thank you once again to the Dice Tower and all the Gloomhaven fans. Uh, uh, let's also thank um, graphic designer Josh McDowell, artist uh, Alexander Illichev, both awesome, awesome people, and I couldn't have done it without them. Uh, and, and while we're talking about it, the uh, 3D modeler, um, James Van Shake. Oops. Um, these, are, these are heavy. You probably don't want to hit the... But anyway, James Van Shake <laughs> was the sculptor. Uh, he, he's great as well. And so, yes, thank you to all, these, all those people. And uh, I'll get off the stage again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm really going to have to play Gloomhaven now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying that for a long time. I know. <laughs> All right, our next award is about theming. I think theming is important, so hey, I'll, I'll do it. Oh. <laughs> what? I get to do an award at least one, right? When he puts together the show, no, he has to present the award he wants to present. Yeah, well, no, this, well, these are the wrong envelopes. Oh, my goodness, don't pull an Oscars. Oh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> Don't worry, that was last year. Okay, okay. No surprise. I'm always nervous with Jason. Okay. Um, hey, yeah, theming. There's two things that we that we as a group, you know, we, we talk about for theming. One is, is the theme something new and unique? You know, hey, it's not zombies again. It's not trading in a Mediterranean. It's not building a castle to please some fickle king who, you know, it wants you to build a certain way or whatever. But also... Does the theme work? You know, does when you play that game, does, do you feel that the theme is immersive? Both of those are valid, and they aren't necessarily in the same thing. Sometimes it's unique and interesting and immersive. Sometimes it might be the same theme we've seen before. Maybe it is zombies, but we're seeing it in a completely different way, you know? And, yeah, this is, for me, my personal favorite award because it's the thing I look for. I like theme. I think theme is important. Um, <laughs> and then I'm about to start preaching here, okay? And then <laughs> I say, <laughs> let's take a look at the nominees. Best, Best strategy theme. game. A Ex Libris, designed, designed by, by Adam P. McIntyre, published by Renegade Games Studio, published by Mind Clash Games. Near and far, 
Designed by Sawyer Pine Lockett. Designed by John Ray Gilmore. Okay, so you were really getting tired there, then, Eric. <laughs> if there's double audio, I that might have been my fault. I, I was really tired. I didn't know I could tired. do that. That's Tell me about the cadence again. <laughs> that takes practice. <laughs> I mean... You, you start talking, and then you keep talking over the talking. I can't explain it. Thanks for problem. These new tricks. Well, that was good. Is that your fault? It might have been. <laughs> Let, let's have, wait, let's roll the thing, but I, don't put I the audio up it. and have, have Eric read do it. it live. All right, so we got Ex Libris. <laughs> I don't have the names. Near and Far. Red Raven Games. Thank you. Designed by Ryan Lockett, Red Raven Games. Photosynthesis. Blue Orange Designed Games. by Hallmar Hawk, Photosyn uh, Blue Orange Games. Spirit Island. Designed by, I'm not sure. What? <laughs> Don't say that. And, and this war of mine. Designed by Marco Orat and someone else. And <laughs> what's the company, Tom? Yeah, uh, that, that's from a, a, a publisher in Europe. <laughs> what was that again? <laughs> I don't have the papers in front of me. So <laughs> Wait, do Those I? Those only have the winners. Oh, wait, I, yeah. I, I, Oh, never mind. Um, yes, I don't know. We're going to fix this in post. I'll <laughs> <laughs> never know. This is how the Dice Tower works. You don't hear this stuff behind the scenes because exactly. we fix it. <laughs> All right, well, I think we can at least read the winner here for best theming. And we do have the win nominees listed on the internet. You can go look them up and see the names properly and correctly as they've been there for a while. But let's see who has won. And we have... This War of Mine from Awakened Realms, Michael Oraz and Jacob Wazanowski, designers. This is the first I saw award for Michael Orax and Jacob Wazanowski and for This War of Mine. Let's see what they had to say. Hey guys, on behalf of the whole Awakened Realms team and uh, authors of the game, Michal Oraz and Jakub Wazanowski, I would like to really thank you uh, for featuring uh, this War of Mine uh, as uh, the best uh, thematic game of 2017. Uh, this is a really great honor and we are also amazingly happy that this project was highlighted because uh, it is a very serious game and we are very happy that those kinds of topics are starting to be able to be a part of, of a board games. Uh, industry. So thank you very much and have a nice call. It's definitely the truth of it. If you've never played the game, it certainly immerses you in a theme that you probably have never seen in a board game before. Um, a game that definitely makes you think um, and can make you sad. Uh, and very few games do that. I mean, I'm usually sad because my opponent is whooping up on me. And uh, this war of mine, I'm sad because of the events that happen over the course of the game. It's mm -hmm. a, it's, I, it's, it sort of stretches the boundaries of, of what makes a good theme for a game and a compelling theme for a game. Sure. And I think it shows how board games can treat very sensitive topics in a respectful and gamified way that really is impactful and powerful, but still an excellent game experience. All right. Well, now we have the last one, game of the year. All right, we have 10 nominees for this one. Do we need to read these? Or as far we're as about we to know. find out. How will Eric sound this time? Let's take There's a look at our nominations. Eric in the back. I did these at 2 in Best the morning one night. Game of the year. Anachrony. Seven designed Pun. by Richard Amon. Designed by Ludwig Ruder. They know Sarcer. Published by Sirius Lab. Let's just turn the sound off and let's look yeah, at the nominees. Watching. OK, wait. I heard Anachrony again. I definitely did not do that because I, I did it from the audio from last year and Lampy. ripped it out. So somehow that got in two of them in a row. Charter stones. <laughs> Here, wait. Come on, Eric, do your thing. Eric, do your I, thing. Dinosaur, Dinosaur Island. Island. <laughs> I'm not going to say them incorrectly because I want to do it right. Gloomhaven. <laughs> Near and far. Hmm. 
really hmm. is good at reading these names. Pandemic Legacy, season two. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Sagrada. Hmm. Who is doing that? Spirit Island. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> All right, well, you know, I work these guys a lot. They put a lot of this together. We had to, because of the voting, and we have to do so much at the last minute. And Jason was doing World Cup and everything. And I want to give a big shout out not, to Derek, who's back there in the back, who puts all this together. Yeah, Derek, you're great. You're the best. Because this is the deal, right? People always notice when Derek makes a mistake in a video, right? You'll say, oh, look, he made a mistake in this video that went up this week. I get the guy like 30 videos a week from me, and you notice the one out of 100 that there's a mistake, and, and the other 99 are being put together. So that's a tough job. I never stop talking, and he's putting these videos together. So big props to him. Yeah, Derek's awesome. We also want to give a lot of props to the guys that came in and put all these lights. I mean, I feel so fancy on this stage. <laughs> The folks who came in and did the lights and the sound for us put this backdrop together for us. This is, we feel this pretty professional. Is this is fantastic. Let's give them a big hand, because this, it's really cool in here. All right, but let's find out what won Game of the Year. I know that this, this was a very interesting thing. It was very close all the way to the end, which game won. It really was. I, I know because me and Jason talked about this. Oh, <laughs> I, knew, I knew it before I opened it up. I'll pretend to be surprised. Gloomhaven <laughs> from Central <laughs> Fair Games. This is the fifth Dice Star Award tonight for Isaac Childress and for Gloomhaven. They previously won for Best Small Publisher, Best New Designer, Best Cooperative Game, and Best Strategy Game. Oh sure, yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I think I think this is gonna be a problem when I fly home. Uh, I'm, I think I'm gonna have to visit the UPS store. Maybe if I plug them, they'll like let me send stuff for free. Maybe this is just retribution for the massive. Like, right, the right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now you get to haul a giant heavy hey, box around. Box? Yeah, yeah, they, but I don't know if they'll fit. They might fit in a Gloomhaven box. But yeah, they definitely weigh, they weigh about as much as Gloomhaven, so yeah, that's, that's true. Um, uh, right, so, wow. Um, no, this is, this is so fabulous. This is amazing. Best game of the year. I mean, did you see all the other games that were not? Like, those are some kick-ass games. I'm sorry, I'm not. <laughs> I, I apologize. I'm used to it by now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is, this is amazing. I want to dedicate these. Um, no, before I do that, I want to plug Founders of Gloomhaven, which is in the <laughs> library. Uh, you should go check that out. Uh, you should also play Gloomhaven if you haven't done that, because <laughs> I, I hear it's a pretty good game. Are you willing, are you willing to teach? Or sure, I'll teach you to play Gloomhaven. Yeah, sure. Okay, I'm holding him to it. All he's right. He's in, he's in. Uh, yeah, okay, but yeah, I'm dedicating these awards uh, to my wife, who's sitting over there. She's the greatest person, the greatest wife. Um, you know, she, uh, she believed in me, believed in the whole, whole thing. Um, as I was spending years and years and years working on it. Um, and so I really, really have to, to give my hat off to her and all my awards to her. And uh, maybe she doesn't want this many awards because, <laughs> yeah, she, it's, it's really, it's her bag, I think. Is, is going. But anyway, uh, all right, thank you so much and uh, have a good night. So in a couple pieces of Gloomhaven related news, first of all, tomorrow night, the Jack Vass Memorial Fund auction, we have four copies of it here um, that have been donated that we're going to be auctioning off, so come on out if you want to get a copy. And um, the Dice Tower specific scenario for our Kickstarter is pretty much done. 
And that will be coming out. I liked it. I'm good with it. And that will be sent out to everyone who backed that very, 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 very soon. Uh, I give us to the end of the convention now at least, okay? It's been a convention, <laughs> huh? Yeah. So we are done with the Dice Tower Awards. I really, again, I think sometimes people get really hung up on the winner, and that's good. It's good to win. But those are serious nomination lists. Yes. Right? If you don't know what game to play in a category, you can play any game in those. I mean, they're all fantastic games. Uh, I, I really, I mean, especially Game of the Year. You look at some of those games, it's just, yeah. it's an amazing thing. And so. Uh, and if you're a Dice Tower fan, you can probably play almost any yeah, of them. All, most of them are really I'm pretty sure they're yeah. all in the library, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. It's a, I put some of them in myself because they weren't there. There was a couple <laughs> missing, and there's a couple on, I think, Spirit Islands on the Hot Games table. Uh, we didn't put Seventh Continent on the Hot Games table or Gloomhaven on the Hot Games table because we want people to switch out those tables. <laughs> and you could sit there and be there all day if you do that. <laughs> but we want to thank, again, a lot of the publishers and designers who came here and make these games. The Dice Tower Con exists you know, we, you can say it exists because we did a show, right? Uh, you know, we started the Dice Tower so many years ago, and we're almost up to our 10th, like, a, we're a month away from our 10th anniversary of that first video that I recorded on a laptop, and I'm really excited about that, and I never thought we'd be here, right? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking for it. I'm, what I'm saying is, though, I walk down these halls and people stop me and say hi or they whisper about me. And I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to say hi. <laughs> um, but the publishers and designers are the reason I exist, right? And so we get a lot of credit because we're on video all the time. But we have big name publishers and big name designers and small name publishers and small name designers here. And so if you see them and you recognize their name or whatever, tell them how much you like their stuff. That's a big deal, you know, and that's really gratifying to hear because I promise you the internet will tell them otherwise, <laughs> right? The internet will tell them every mistake, and it's good to hear and you say, hey, I really like your game. You're like, oh, they don't want to hear that. I promise they do, all right? It's a fantastic thing for them to hear. So tell a publisher, tell a designer today how much you like their game. This is your public service announcement to do that. <laughs> you know, and, and it's, huh? Oh, the more you know, they had a little rainbow thing <laughs> over the top. You know, and, and even like there's, there's folks out there who are showing off games and you walk by and you're like, oh, a prototype, I don't know. For all you know, that person will be the next Eric Lang. You know, and they'll be here or the next big published game. <laughs> Eric Lang is surprised you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be surprised he's not the existing for Eric Lang. No, but I mean, that's, I, I just think it's a big deal. I, I, I think that encouragement you go and give these people feedback, and you might be sitting out there, and someday you'll be up here on stage, and we think that would be fantastic because the more people who can come up and be involved in this, the more thrilled I am. Uh, Jason gave me some things to read out here. Um, it's a bunch of statistics. It He's is. He's a big stats guy. Um, what am I reading this again for? What is this? Am I just reiterating just, what won everything? Just yeah, it's just statistics. Points. You like to talk about statistics yes, at I the really, end of the really night. Yes, I really, really do. So Gloomhaven won five awards. Why do you say five of six here? Because it was nominated for six awards. Ah, oh, and it won five of them. Got it. Okay. Near okay. and Far won one of its four nominations. Seventh Continent won a four. Azul won a four. Photosynthesis won a three. Downforce, one of two, Star Wars Rebellion, Santorini, Magic Maze, and This War of Mine were nominated for one, and they won their categories. But again, the nominees list checked all those out, too. Some thanks are in order. I want to thank my co-hosts, Mandy, Suzanne, and Eric, for sitting up here and giving us good, delightful chatter during this whole thing. <laughs> In our next episode, we'll be back to normal. It'll be me and Eric, and then Mandy and Suzanne, and then we're doing something at Gen Con, and we've put so much effort into that so far. Lots of effort. Yeah. Yeah. Super prepared. Actually, we are making a pretty big announcement at Gen Con that I'm very, 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 very excited about, and so you want to hear that one, maybe. Um, <laughs> it's very different than last year's announcement. Um, so there's that. And I, I think we talked about this, right? Like he went there. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want people to be like, okay, now we're going to be switching podcast people again. No, that's not happening, okay? Um, 
And I want to thank Jason here. Jason does a lot of behind the scenes work. We talk about publishers, we talk about designers, but there's also the behind the scenes, the manufacturers, the people who make these games. And so we want to give a lot of thanks to Panda Game Manufacturing for making these trophies and a lot of our great games that we like. And of course, big thanks to the camera people, all our presenters, all the people doing audio back there, the publishers and designers, and then most importantly, all of you guys who are watching online and who might be watching us here live. We thank you very much. Do you guys have any final words of wisdom before we end our show tonight? None that I haven't already written down for the closing of the podcast, no. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm wondering, if I, if I slide you some pie later, will you tell me which category you did the tiebreaker in? <laughs> if you slide me pie, I might. <laughs> And Mandy? I can't follow that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Bribery. A good way to end our show. All right. Well, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Suzanne Sheldon. I'm Mandy Hutchinson. And I'm Eric Summerer. And you've been listening, watching, or I don't know what you've been doing to the Dice Tower. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Promotional consideration has been provided by game publishers in the form of review copies of games. This episode, number 563, was recorded in front of a live convention audience on July 5th, 2018. Tom and I join you next week, followed by Suzanne and Mandy, and then, well, at this point, I'm not planning more than two weeks in advance. Join us, will you? The Dice Tower is produced by Tom, Mandy, Suzanne, and Eric, with assistance from Itai Perez, Derek Porter, and Rob Searing. Timothy Pinkham composed our theme, Mr. Garcia's new series in which he analyzes great infantry and aerial commanders throughout history provided by heroes of land, air, and Z. <laughs> and hosting is provided by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games at great prices at CoolStuffInc.com. Don't forget to visit the other shows in the Dice Tower Network. Find your next favorite at DicetowerNetwork.com. Until next time, from all the gang at the Dice Tower, have, have fun, fun gaming. gaming. <laughs> Quick, run. There's more games to play. There's more time in a day. I took a nap Stop today. I'm to ready. Us. I'm ready to do more. Do this. What, are we wooing for Let's a nap? That's how old we are. Oh, hey, we have... Uh, more new promos over here. If you missed them the first time through, we've added some stuff. There's a lot of Jason that he'll sign all of them. I will. All and also, of them. if you want an award, we do have bubble wrap for those awards over on the side. And we have boxes if you happen to win a whole bunch of awards. Or, or we can just get them shipped to you, you know. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.